Hello, and welcome to my video. My name is Reed Havens, and I'm here today because I want to show you some of my best techniques for transforming your average Power BI report into something that is unique and stands out in the sea of reporting. Before I get into that, however, let me just take a moment to explain who I am and why you should listen to me. Now, I'm a principal consultant and blog editor at PowerPivotPro.com and a part-time instructor at the University of Washington. Now, all of us here at Power Pivot Pro are BI ninjas, and we love to consult, train, and teach everything there is related to Excel and Power BI. All right, now enough with the introductions. What I want to do now is show you an example of a Power BI report that is unpolished and a bit messy. Then what I'll do is walk you through the various techniques and best practices to let us polish and refine this report. As I go through each of these practices, I'll also explain in detail why I'm doing them as well, because I want to make sure you have a good grasp of the how and the why for each of these. All right, let's get started. Now, the first thing that I want to go over is the removal of too much color. Now, one of the common pitfalls of reporting uh, either in Excel or Power BI, is the fact that people often oversaturate their reports with color. They want to fill every pixel of the entire report with some kind of a color scheme. Um, and even worse, what they often use is uh, colors that aren't complementary, or they don't use colors uh, in the correct method. So this one, as you can see right now, is essentially falling a victim to that common pitfall. It's just like, the entire background is colored, Every one of these reports has color within the, the background of the charts themselves. There's a lot of contrasting rows in here. So let's go ahead and clean this up a little bit. So I'm going to start by removing the color in the background. Go over to the paint roller. I'm going to go to page background. I'm going to set that back to the default. There we go. Essentially removing all the color from that. Perfect, and I'm going to do the same thing with all of these. I'm going to get rid of that excess color that we have in here. Just going to select and turn off the background. Same thing, turn off the background here. Turn off the background on this one. Now for the table, what I like to do is I actually use the color themes for this one. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and switch that up a little bit. Again, under the paint roller section, you'll notice you actually go to matrix style, gives you a whole bunch of selections of uh, types of visual styles you can apply to here. Uh, more often than not, honestly, I've, I've tried to use most of, the, most of them. As you can see, a lot of them use a, a very stark black and white contrast color that I don't particularly like. Uh, the only one that I've really found that works well for me is the minimal. And that actually cleans this up a bit. The one thing that it, uh, it actually is doing is it's adding a little bit of a line specifically right here and right here even though there's no color in it at the moment so I actually do want to add a little splash of color into there just to give it a touch of color because the color can be good you just you only want it uh, you want it subtle not so much in your face so I'm actually gonna go ahead and set that to like a let's let's set that as oh, wrong one set that as a blue so I'm going to set the outline color as a, as a nice blue there, and let's go ahead and increase that just uh, a little bit. So that, by the way, this is just simply setting the, the color in here, and this is also, if I can expand this, there we go, it's the outline weight. So the weight lets you determine how thick the line is right over on these two spots. There we go, that should about do it. Now some of you may already notice that there's some distinct sections in this report that I made. Now in general, I like to split reports into three primary areas. And that's the title and banner section at the top, a filters and slicers section on the left side, and then the main report and data section where all your charts, visuals, and graphs are. So what I'm going to do is walk through each of these three sections and polish them up one at a time, starting with the header section at the top. So one of the important reasons that it's good to have kind of a title and header section is that's a good location where you can essentially put your data in in lights and highlight the information that you really want to be seeing. So that can be 
uh, in the examples that we see here, like our total sales, our total profits, average sales per day and order dates, uh, single values that you want the customer to be able to, to use and look at and essentially get at a glance where they, they want some additional detail maybe in the data section, but they really want to just at times be able to come in and skim and see that information at the top of the page um, up there in the top banner section. So I'm going to go ahead and start with that and kind of clean up these cards a bit, make them a little bit more um, quality and ha have the visuals pop a bit more. And as well, what I want to do is actually want to add in a company logo and a few other things to really make this section stand out. So I'll start with some of these visuals here and I'll actually start with the first card. So what I'm going to do with this, let me scoot it over here so you can actually kind of see it as I'm editing it. I'm going to go to the paint roller again and I'm actually going to take off the category label because I'm I'm not really a fan of the of that label being down at the bottom. Oop, wrong one. There we go. Category label off. And what I'm going to do instead is actually turn on the title. And as you can see, there's actually some of the cleanup that I've already done in here. But what I like to do generally is turn on the background color to something. And as well, change the font color to kind of like a, a white or a light gray to make it really stand out. Now, by itself, it doesn't look that impressive or anything. But what we can also do is to go along with that is you turn on the background color. There we go, to match it. And then go ahead and change the data label color. Perfect. So now essentially it's it's an actual card. Like it, it floats around, it's distinct from the other ones, and it's a uh, it's essentially visually distinct from the other ones. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually rename this to total sales, because that's the title that I want it to have. There we go. Perfect. Now there's a couple other really nice little tricks that go with this. So, I mean, I did all of these edits. I could go and do it again on here, here, and here, but that's gonna take some time. And uh, one thing we like to kind of promote here at Power Pivot Pro is the uh, being kind to your future self. It's doing things that will benefit you later on or reduce the amount of time that you're doing something. And a great function in, in uh, Power BI Desktop that lets you do that is in fact, this beautiful little uh, tool called the paint uh, format painter. So if I select that and I click another card, it actually automatically applies all of the formatting, the titles and everything else to that. And this one is actually average sales per day. So let me go ahead and change that. So you'll notice that uh, if you already have a title in there, it will keep that old one. And the title isn't dynamic, by the way, it is static. So it's important to make sure that it's named correctly. So this is average sales per day. There we go. Let's try that one more time. Now this one might get a little uh, perfect. So last one, and this is last order date. There we go. Now there's one last thing that I'm gonna do is you'll notice that all of these are of various sizes. This is actually different, uh, different size than the rest of them, which uh, to me, I will notice that, a customer might notice that as well. I do like to have these about the same size, so I'm gonna go ahead and just make sure that these are all, there we go, the same size as each other. One nice thing to do is you can just drag them on top of each other and resize until they, they fit, essentially. Um, the other thing that I have been doing, if you actually go under view, snap objects to grid makes that significantly easier. So this is a wonderful little tool that essentially, as you can see, if you select these, there we go, it actually pops them around with it off. It makes it much harder to get that exact size because it's free form. So let me go ahead and there we go. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing with average sales. Make sure that's appropriately sized, perfect. And the last order date. There we go. All right, let me zoom out a bit and just, uh, I'll go ahead and wedge these all in here. And it's even make, it even makes it really easy to space them nice and cleanly. Perfect. Now the other thing that I wanna do, so you scoot com uh, scooch the company report over a bit. I'm gonna go ahead and here, and put a company logo in there. 
and this could also be a product logo, anything else. Uh, it's it's something that just gives it a little bit splash, uh, a little splash of a brand image. So I have something actually on the desktop for that. Let's go ahead and import. And I'm actually going to grab it from a class that I teach. Uh, where is it? Right there it is, Northwind logo. Perfect. So let's just uh, let's consider this our company image for now. Nice and easy to add. So just throw that up into the corner. There we go. And then same with these. Actually, I'm gonna yeah, I'll make you a little bit bigger so they can fit with the rest of this. Let's just drop all of these down. The one thing I do like to do is I like to try to save as much space as I can. Uh, in in my header section and not make it any bigger than it needs to be And this can actually scoot down and I can probably make you just a little bit bigger There we go Yeah, it's the one great thing about power bi is it does uh, The canvas limits you to the amount of space that you have which does force you to really think about exactly what what you want to display because you have a finite amount of area however it does make it so you really want to squeeze everything in there as much as you can which is why I'm kind of just edging things up just a little bit there we go get just the right amount of space now there's one other thing I want to do to really help separate this from the rest of the of uh, the charting in there so I'm gonna go ahead and add a little line that actually lets me kind of separate everything it's a really cool divider line I'm gonna go to shapes and select line and again that's right here it just allows you to add any shape I don't use too many of the other ones but the line is super helpful uh, to create that little dividing section I'm gonna go over and format it because right now it's a vertical line and I actually want it to be horizontal I'm gonna change that to 90 degrees there we go and let's uh, let's make that a bit consistent with the rest of the colors I'm gonna make that like a nice light blue Let's go ahead and stretch this one more time. There we go. Perfect, and we got our header section. Now there's one thing I actually forgot to do that I wanna make sure to hit on before I move on from my header section. So the things at the top that you'll see here, we have about four sections. We have, or four cards I should say. Total sales, profits, average sales per day, and last order date. Now some of these can arguably be a little bit more important than other ones. Like profits and average sales per day are more of a, are a better indicator of kind of the, the pulse on the company that you really want to, to see. So I'm actually gonna use some colors to draw out the fact that these are the more valuable uh, bits of data that we wanna show on our report. And I'm gonna do that using color gradient. Now the great thing with color gradient, uh, the way that we perceive it is often darker colors are usually perceived as something of greater quantity, greater quality, uh, greater value, or something that's just more important. So I'm actually going to keep those two in the middle, the profits and average sales per day as a dark color, and then I'm going to shade total sales and last order date as something a little bit brighter to, uh, to draw the eyes towards the middle and the important numbers. I'm going to go over to total sales, and I'm going to go to the paint roller. And under title, I'm going to change the background color to a little bit lighter. And I'm going to do the same thing under the background itself. A little lighter again. There we go. Nope, wrong one. Beautiful. And I really easily just use that format painter to clean up that other one. Perfect. Now for this section, what I want to do is I want to switch over and switch gears into the filters and slicers selection. Now one thing that's important about these is really understanding the types of slicers that are available to use. Because unlike Excel, which really just has one major slicer, uh, just like the click button type, there's a lot of different slicers that you can use in Power BI. So let's explore some of those a little bit. So if we look over here right now, we do already have some slicers in the area, but they're they're like the traditional drop down or a selection type, which is you know you pick a button, and it will give you the selection for that. But it's you know it takes up a lot of room, 
Uh, there's a lot of white space between these, and it's just it's not a very effective or intuitive way to use these, uh, at least compared to the types of slices that you can now use in Power BI. So I'm going to start by cleaning these up one at a time and getting a kind of a better, nicer, cleaner section to, to go with from all of these. So I've used a few of the different ones, and overall, my favorite type, honestly, is the drop down. If you actually select this specifically, this little arrow, little down arrow right there, that does is give you the option to pick between a bunch. And now it's uh, Power BI gives you a, a few options to go from. You get a list of drop down. Now you're seeing between less than or greater than or equal to all these three bottom ones. Those are because the te technically year is an actual number, so it's assuming that. Hey, because this is an actual number column you're slicing on, if you want, you can provide a range or things like that. So it's actually pretty nice. Like between would give you the option to actually do a slider of the years um, if you wanted to do some kind of a range. Uh, normally speaking, this is better if you have, say, like um, housing prices or, some, or, or other some kind of currency or product price. It would be really good for that. Uh, for this, I'm just going to go ahead and select drop down because I really just want to be able to pick a single year at a time. Um, and I am going to do a couple of other cleanups. So let me let me bring this over here so you can see it as I clean it up a bit. One thing that I really like to add is a header line. So there's a little outline section under header that lets you actually add a line. So I'm going to select bottom to put that into there. Now you'd think like, okay, header line, cool. Like, how would I change the color on that? It should be in the header section, right? Like, if maybe font color, well, no, background color. Uh, no, that's not it. Like, there's, you know, you, where's the where's the line color that I would want to be able to, to edit? Well, for whatever reason, they decided to put it under general uh, in an entirely different section. So it's not super intuitive of where the location is, but this is where you would go to find it. Uh, it's already set to a color that I like. Uh, and again, outline of two is normally what I use at uh, use this as. So I'm going to go ahead and bring that back over here and drop this up a little bit. Just to clean it up. Now there is one other type of uh, slicer that I really like to use and they just added this over the summer. So I'm actually going to control C and control V because I want to keep some of the formatting and I'm going to put a second slicer up here at the top and there's something that I'm going to drag into here. So I'm actually going to replace my, uh, the year value with the date. So that's an actual date data type. Now, if I actually go over, if I look at it, it's you know it's all the dates that are in here right now. But if I hit that drop down, you'll notice a couple of other little sections here in the in here. There's a before, an after, uh, a list, which is what we started with, and the, the really 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 important one that I want to point out is relative. So let me go ahead and select that. Now, what this does is create a slicer that lets you actually select the last one years, select the last one weeks, days, whatever it might be. So you can actually now do relative dates based off of that. Uh, one thing to point out is the, the calendars, by the way, that does the complete date. So the last one week goes back exactly a week from the, um, from the current day. So it can go back one midweek or one um, within mid month or anything else like that or mid year. But if I selected calendar, that goes back that number of entire complete months, that entire number of complete weeks, or that entire number of complete years. So that's a little subtle difference between those two. But this thing is very powerful, and it's super useful to clients, because historically, you would have had to use DAX or something else to be able to get uh, the same amount of information, <clears throat> like uh, rolling 12 months or rolling six months, or any kind of window like that, you would need to use uh, DAX filtering and calculate. But now the customer can essentially just come in and pick their last, their next, or this, uh, any of their years, and do that now with a slicer, which adds an entire differently, a different level of, of um, dynamicness to this that's really, really powerful. So that's what I really like about this relative date slicer. And one thing I'm actually going to do is, as well is I'm going to rename this so they actually know what it is a little bit better for the customer. So I'm going to rename and call this just relative date. There we go. Perfect. Now, one thing that I actually cleverly do as well uh, with these things 
is I separate them additionally with a little bit of a line that makes them even more uh, distinct from each other. Because I, whenever I can, or if any way possible, I really like to group things together to show that two things are related. So relative date and year, they're both related to each other um, and any other types of slicers. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually throw in this little divider right here and separate that for the next section that we have. Pop that in. And dun, dun, dun. there we go, perfect. And I can use that Format Painter again, or actually Format the Employee Sales region. And what I'm gonna do with this, is I wanna get the color a little bit different than it is on the rest of them. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually color this a slightly different color to further uh, point out the differences. So I'm gonna give that like a slightly different blue. There we go. And I'm only gonna keep one of these in here for sales region. Because there's one other thing that I wanna point out that's really important. Like I could do employee sales name and add an additional slicer. However, that just takes a valuable space because honestly you could use the employee name right down here. If I wanted to slice it for Michael or Margaret or any of those, all I have to do is simply select that uh, person's name right in here. And this acts as a slicer as well which saves me the valuable space that I would need to have it over here. So that's why I'm only going with employee sales region instead of just the, uh, the individual name because I can already slice for Northern here and then even further if I wanted, I could slice on Laura's name. All right, let's go ahead and do the format painter again and do product category. Scoot that up there, perfect. And the last two sections I'm gonna include is actually the shipper and supplier. I'm gonna put that right down there, here we go. Scoot these down just a little bit. And I'm actually gonna copy and paste these last two because now I even have more room, as you can see, to actually fill in the rest of my slices down at the bottom. Uh, the, you know, that drop down really does give me extra room to be able to polish these things up, which is just, it's a very, very handy feature. And again, the biggest reason why I prefer to use the, the drop down list compared to any of the other types in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and look for a name because I'm actually gonna use two. I'm gonna use shipper and I'm gonna rename that to shipper name. I'm gonna do that one more time. I'm gonna call that supplier or same thing, name, and I'm gonna bring in supplier. Perfect. And rename that again so it's nice and friendly. We got those two right here, shipper and supplier. And last thing that I wanna do, go ahead and let's make this a nice gray. There we go. So we again have that color separation that really makes these things stand out. There we go. Yeah, so now we got a nice distinct section. And the very last thing that I'm gonna do in here, I'm actually gonna scoot these up a little bit just so they're in line with the rest of my report titles. There we go. And as you can see, I like to try to wedge these things in here nice and compact just so there's a lot of room left. And I'm also gonna put one more divider line. So I'm gonna rotate it, make that a nice zero degree. And I'm gonna put that right here. Where did it go? There it is. And perfect, look at that. There we are. And now we have a nice clear section for all of our slicers over here in the corner. Oh, and looks like I forgot to change the category color and I'm even gonna rename that just for good measure. Call that product category. So we are very, very clear on exactly what this is. And I'm gonna give that a little splash of red. Actually, 
Let's go with uh, let's go with this one. So it's Nox. There we go. So now we have a nice distinct blue for our years. Sales reaching gets its own section for uh, employees. Product category gets its own section for product details, and then a shipper and essentially the uh, order information down here at the bottom. Perfect. Now the next things that I want to go over is going to be some chart aesthetics. Specifically, I'm going to want to adjust my three visuals that I have on this page. I want to kind of polish them up a bit, maybe add some features, uh, tweak some settings, generally take these things and make them a little bit more presentable, or even slightly tweak the, uh, the visual type a bit based on the type of data that's in here. So let's go ahead and start with the top one here. Go ahead and zoom in. So what we have here is our total sales by forecast and dates. Like this is a chart that kind of, you know, it works, it's a line graph, but it's not really telling us that much. Like there's no data points, there's not really any formatting, it's a very generic, plain looking chart. So I'm going to run through some of the practices that I do on most visuals, and that's uh, turning on data labels and editing the, the chart title a little bit. So by default, it normally, uh, Power BI normally has total sales, forecast, whatever the title might be. It has it in the upper left hand corner. Uh, I'm of the school of thought where I kind of like it center aligned. I know that's debatable by some people, but I think it works best for me. So I'm going to go ahead and tweak those settings a little bit. And I'll find that over here under the paint roller section, under title. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, adjust the alignment into the middle. And one thing that I want to do as well, I'm going to uh, change the font color to white. And that's because I'm going to add a background color to, uh, to the chart title. I'm going to go ahead and go with that blue that I've been using a lot. And you notice that what this does is it actually it adds a, a really nice frame to the, to the object here. So it helps uh, distinguish it from the other objects onto the page and really aligns it there nice and cleanly. So you can kind of see where this starts and, then, and the next one ends. The other thing that I really want to add into this is some data labels as well onto the line. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. And by default, you'll notice that it, uh, it's kind of intelligently going for the, the highs and the lows. So Power BI recently added a feature, if you look into here, called Label Density. So let me zoom out a bit and show you what that looks like. Say if I have that at 10%. It goes with a lot of the low numbers that's probably a little bit too uh, too shallow if we do it at a hundred percent it shows every single data label so we want to find a nice medium because honestly we what we care about at least uh, that our client wants in this is not necessarily every data point but kind of those magical number of data points the ones that are really high or really low like the outliers uh, you know the, the, the dips and the peaks so 75% is a nice little medium for that that really allows us to to work from that level. Now the other thing that I really want to add into here as well, uh, one last thing uh, to kind of make this really stand out and um, provide some real value to the customer, if we go ahead and actually look over here under our analytics tab, there's some really cool features that we can add. Uh, we got trend lines, constants, mins, max, a whole lot of different types of uh, values that we can put into our chart. Now the one that I want to focus on on the bottom is a really cool one called Forecast. So you can notice, that you open it up, hit the Add button. Let's go ahead and call this something besides Forecast 1. I'll just, I'll just call this Forecast. And you know what, uh, I'm going to do half a year. So that's six data points for me because I want about six months out. 95% interval, that's all that's good. I'm not going to tweak it too much. And I've hit Apply. You'll see what this adds in is it actually it, it creates a forecast line. So it helps predict what the, uh, the data is going to do based off of historical values. Uh, and it shows you know, the forecast and the upper lower bound based off of the percentile that we have in there. And this number is something that will change you know, if we select different years. There we go. So it's a really cool little feature that lets us see that number that, that changes in with the chart itself. And it can be very useful for clients, especially ones who are wanting to do a lot of forecasting and predictions. It's a nice, clean, easy way to get additional data into there and help project forward rather than constantly having to look at the past uh, when it comes to the, the, the report itself. Now, the next part of this report that I'm going to want to clean up a little bit is going to be this chart down here. 
So this chart, if we take a look at it, ask ourselves some questions. Uh, it's employee's name, and what it's doing is it's a stack column chart. So it's looking at the total orders by the employee name. And if we think about it a bit, we can interpret that the customer, the client, is probably wanting to see employee performance per month and see kind of how they compare against each other. Now, looking at it by default, we can kind of surmise just by the sizes like okay there it looks like uh, margaret might be the the biggest one on this column if we compare it to the others okay we can see that 32 does appear to be the largest number but there's no easy way to tell or track performance month over month and follow the journey so what power bi has done recently is they did release uh, a new type of chart called the ribbon chart that easily lets you uh, see performance and kind of have a journey follow along with it so let me instead of talking about it too much let me go ahead and show you what that would look like so I'm going to switch this over to that, um, that visual type. So the one that I'm talking about is located over here. That's a ribbon chart. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. And it changed it. And now look at that. We can immediately watch a journey. That's almost kind of like snakes or ribbon working its way through the report. And that, uh, Margaret, the one that we were looking at earlier, we can immediately tell she was the top performer for two months. She dipped down in quarter one, increased back up in quarter two and quarter three, and you can follow her journey through this and see how she's been performing. Uh, see which ones are the lower performers at the bottom and all of that. So it's a really cool chart and it's one of my favorite things that they've added recently because they, they haven't put in too many new visuals this year, but this one is absolutely my favorite. Now I wanna polish this up a bit too. I wanna add some data labels, do some other things. Uh, I don't wanna do those steps one at a time, so I'm going to use my little cheat button that uh, is the format painter, and I'm going to copy and paste, or use that to, uh, to copy my formatting settings from another chart and paste it into here. So up at the top, you'll notice this little button right here on the Home tab. So I'm going to select a chart that already has my formatting. I'm going to select Format Painter. I'm going to go down here. There we go. You'll notice that the title got fixed. It got colored in. The font changed. It added in my data labels. So that's great. Now there's a couple other settings that I can still modify as well. I like the, the ribbon uh, that's down here, but I want to kind of make the columns stand out a bit. You'll notice that it's a little hard to tell. The columns are right here and here. Like there are distinct columns between it, but the lines between them uh, are also the same color. So it's kind of hard to tell where the connector ribbon starts and where the columns end. So let's go polish that up. If I go into the format painter button over here, and I look at, where is it, plot area, sorry, uh, ribbons, perfect. There's a couple of options that we have. We have spacing, match, and transparency. So what I want to first do is I want to actually, let me open this up. Let me uh, go ahead and increase the transparency to, let's try 60%. There we go. Now we can actually tell the difference between the columns and the ribbon here. So that's good. Uh, let's make the, maybe make it a little bit lighter. Let's try 70 70, there we go. Mm, too much. Yeah, I think I'll, I'll stick with 60%. That looks pretty good, perfect. And the other thing we can do too is we can actually add a little bit of spacing. Um, and let me show you what that looks like if we put that in. There we go. So it actually puts a little bit of a gap between all of our, uh, our ribbon spots right there. So it, it helps separate them and show them as a little bit distinct from each other. So that really new, um, it helps outline the columns to, to show that it is a stacked column chart, but then it also in the background still has that little bit of a connector between all of them, but it's not quite as obvious. So it does add a bit of visual uh, discernment between the columns and the connectors that go between them. So this is kind of how the way I, I like to design it, and I think it works a lot better this way. Now the last chart that I want to kind of edit or polish up is this one over here in the upper right hand corner. Now this is going to be a nice and easy edit. All I'm going to do is use that Format Painter button that I had. So I'm going to select a chart that's already been formatted, go to Format Painter, and just select that other one. Done. I got my data labels in there. I got my title uh, on that as well, centered, colored in. Now there's one thing left that I kind of want to do. You'll notice that the the axis labels are not really in a number that's particularly convenient. 
it, it's way too big of a number. Like it's in the millions and it's all in the decimal places at this point. So let's go ahead and tweak that on these two just to just to polish it up a little bit more. So I'm gonna head, I'm gonna go to the y-axis, and I'm gonna change my display units to thousands instead. There we go. That's much better. And one more time, I'm gonna do that over on here. I'm gonna change that from auto as well to thousand. Perfect. Now there's one final thing I want to edit on here before I go into showing you how to create some cool things within the data model itself. So what we have is still our table left. Now it's not necessarily something you might think about when you think of chart aesthetics or chart design, but there is a way to add additional valuable information into here uh, using conditional formatting, something that Power BI has started to use within the last year and been continually building upon it and adding to it. So I'm gonna create uh, some conditional formats on three sections. I'm gonna do it on total profits. I'm gonna do it on the month, and, uh, month over month average sales difference. And I'm also gonna do it here in the sales day difference. All three of those are gonna get some conditional formatting. So if I actually go down to total profits and I hit the down arrow, there's a section for conditional formatting that I'm gonna tweak a little bit. So I'm gonna add on this one, I'm gonna add some data bars into here. Now it's gonna give me a pop-up window, there we go, with a few settings in it, whether or not I wanted to change the highest and lowest value from a, uh, from a value to a number, a few other settings, but overall I'm, I'm pretty okay with it as is. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and just select okay. There we go, and that goes, go, it, it goes ahead and populates this information in here, essentially creating a little chart in every single row. So kind of creating this beautiful hybrid between, uh, between a chart and a table itself. Now I want to do a similar thing over on month over month sales date difference and the sales date difference percentage. So the percentage I'm going to add the same type to, I want to create a, uh, a bar uh, chart on there. So I'm going to open that up and go to the same conditional formatting and add a data bar. And I can go ahead and just set it as is, don't need to make any changes. There we go. And what that now does is create a, a bar that shows immediately shows the positive as a negative. So it provides really quick insights, helps the, the client go in and see where the positives and negatives are, and at a glance, uh, see outliers in their data. Now the other thing that I want to create as well is one more value on the month over month sales date difference. Now I don't, I don't want to create a bar on this one. I, instead what I want to create is a color label that's going to either show red for negative or green for positive. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna open it up, go to conditional formatting, and I'm gonna, I have two options. I have a background color scale, and I have a font color scale. So one of these I much prefer to the other one. Uh, as I've mentioned, I, I try to use as minimal color as necessary to, to be um, accentive, show certain things just enough to get the, the data a little bit more uh, intuitive, but I don't want to use too much color. So let me just show you quickly what background color scales looks like, but it's not something that I typically use. And this was really the first option for conditional formatting in Power BI. So if I add that in, give it a second, like yeah, it's just, it's a lot of color. Honestly, it's a little bit too intense. I, I don't find it particularly pretty. Uh, so I've avoided using that one. Now recently this year, what they had, they added in is the option to do that same type of color design but they have it only on the font itself. So the font changes, or sorry, the font color will change, but it leaves the background empty. So I wanna do that. Let's take a look at that again. Look at that. So we still have the same color uh, coding, but it's now only doing it on the font. Even further to improve this, like I like this, but I don't want it to blend together. I don't want it to go from a, a red to a more red to a more green. I really want it to just be two colors. I want it to be a red color for all negatives, a bright red, and a bright green for all positives. I, like essentially these two colors down here. This is a perfect example of a nice bright red for a negative and a nice bright green for a positive. And I want the rest of them to all be that exact same shade for the positive and negative numbers. So there's a little trick you can go in and kind of set those settings. So I'm going to go to conditional formatting and I'm going to go back to the font color scale. And instead of doing a lowest and highest value, if I change these to numbers, and I do a minus one and a zero, 
So what I'm telling it to do is if it's if it's greater than zero, which is the maximum, it's going to be that solid green on this corner over here. And if it's uh, less than the minimum, which is the minus one, it's going to be the solid red. So essentially, it's now just going to be two colors, and it's going to eliminate that little gradient in the middle. So if I hit OK and watch the colors, look at that. We immediately get that bright green and that bright red uh, between the two. It, it creates that great contrast and helps show on both the, uh, the actual month over month sales day difference uh, and the percentage. We now have a bright color for the, uh, for the dollar value and uh, a really good call outs with the bars for the, the percentage as well. Now the last thing that I want to add to this report is a grouping table for our DAX calculations. So by default uh, and historically, the, kind of the practices that, that I've done and a lot of analysts have done is you normally put your DAX calculations in the table where it's getting its data from. So most of our data is coming from orders. So as you can see, like all of my calculations are sitting in here. However, it's not the, the easiest way to, to organize them. They're sorted alphabetically. There is no search option to search for, you know, DAX, and it, it doesn't do anything. There's no click, uh, clickable button that lets you filter to just those. So it would be really great if I could have some kind of a, a table or other little field over here that could organize my calculations together. So Power BI almost has like a hidden feature that lets you create a DAX measures table. And you can take all of your calculations and you can put it in there. And then it holds them in place and then it's going to do a couple of other cool things if you tweak a few settings that I want to show you guys what it does. Uh, it's, it's a pretty awesome little uh, tool. You've, you've probably seen it if you've read uh, some of the posts that I've done on Power, uh, Power Pivot Pro where I talk about it in some of my top five practices. But I'll show you guys how to do it here uh, again as well. So I'm going to go up to the Home tab. And I'm going to select an option called Enter Data. And what this is going to let me do is it's going to create a table for me. This is a template to create an entirely custom uh, table. It's used for a lot of other things, uh, disconnected slicers that we like to talk about a lot here at Power Pivot Pro. This is a great way to do that. But in this scenario, what I'm going to use this for is just to create an empty table as a placeholder to put, a, to put all of our DAX calculations in. So the only thing that I'm going to do is name this DAX measures. And I'm going to select load. Let that spool up. It's going to take a second, create a connection to the model, and generate an uh, empty custom table that's going to go right here. There's my column one, everything, good to go. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to move all of my DAX calculations. I'm going to select them, and I'm going to choose the home table as DAX. So let me zoom out and I'm just going to kind of, I'm going to quickly walk through all of these and just shift them over to this table. Keep going, a few more. Almost there. Total profits moved. Total sales. All right. One time thing. A little tedious, but no problem. We got him in there. Okay, cool. So we have a table. It's in the model. I mean, it's still not. It, it gets better. I like it. Uh, you know, I'm. I'm even going to do one up, and I'm going to go ahead and delete the column because I don't need that. Oops. Let me go ahead and delete it. And I get this is phase one. You know, this is already better than it is. We now have a, a table specifically for our calculations. But it's it's not at the top of the page. It's not in any order that I'd like it to be. Uh, it's still sorted alphabetically with the rest of them. So there's a little trick that happens uh, in Power BI. You notice that I deleted the column. Now, that's for a very good reason. One, I don't actually need it. This is just, this uh, only needs to be a placeholder for my calculations. And number two, something's going to happen when I close the workbook and reopen it. Now, don't ask me why it needs to be restarted, uh, Power BI Desktop, in order for this feature to turn on. But let's watch what happens when I do that. Okay, save my report, and I'm going to close it. And I'm going to open it back up. 
Tamam abi. There we go. Perfect. Opened up. Have our report hanging out here. Now, take a look over in the corner. And look what it's done. It has moved this up to the top of the list right here. Now, what it essentially has, uh, it acknowledges is it says, hey, okay, so you have, you have a table that's empty. It has no columns, or at least no columns visible. And all you have in here is DAX calculations. So I, I realize that what you're trying to do is you're trying to create a, a, a DAX table. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the icon from a table to a calculator and then I'm going to put this at the top of your list. So it's now sorted non-alphabetically. Everything else below it is still going by alphabetical order, but the DAX calculations table will always go at the top of the list. So you have this beautiful uh, separation between the, your calculations, which are nested at the top, and all of your other tables that are below. So it creates a really nice and like enterprise level looking model. Uh, without having to kind of hunt through the rest of your tables to get those other values and, and things like that. Uh, it's a practice that I do every time, and it's something that I do a lot. Now, there, there's a few caveats, however. Um, Marco Russo has pointed out uh, on a blog that I talked about this with that there are certain things that don't necessarily work very well. Uh, specifically, at the time of this video, Q&A gets a little glitchy. And uh, the, the questions and answers with Cortana on PowerBI.com if your DAX is on a separate table compared to the, the table where it's getting its data from. But other than that, this works splendidly, and 99% of the time, I'm happy to use it. So that about does it for this video. We've walked through a lot of things. Uh, let me show you the other report. We've gone from here. We've gone from a report that's very bland, had a lot of things honestly not going well for it, it wasn't using particularly well-designed slicers. There's a lot of, or way too many colors. There was not a lack of alignment. Just so many things that honestly were wrong with this. And it's just, it looked so unfinished. And we worked our way through a piece at a time to create something that's truly a lot more polished, has better visuals in terms of the story we're trying to tell. An example, that, that ribbon chart, some forecasting, and a lot of other things that really just make the report pop. So I hope you learned a lot from this. Uh, take, with it, take from it what you will, and I appreciate your time, and I look forward to seeing you in my next video.